Today we're starting our public participation process and information awareness regarding performance assessment that was submitted by Energy Solutions for the disposal of depleted uranium within the state of Utah. That's important for the public to be aware of and to be involved with and that's why we're think that, that's why it's so important that we begin this process and make more people aware of this opportunity to be, to be able to participate. Recently, the Energy Solutions submitted to us a performance assessment. We are required, and our responsibility is, is to review this document. It's a very highly technical and complex document. It will take us several months to be able to review this. And after we review it, the result of that will help inform our final decision about the suitability and acceptability of the disposal of the depleted uranium within the state of Utah. So I'm here to help in a sense, help in the process to see that nothing is left out. Um, I give my comments, both positive and negative, and hope that those are uh, taken into account. I've been a resident of Utah for 40 years, and I've watched as the, our population has developed and as our environment has evolved, and I have a deep desire that the future generations have the best state that we can leave for them. The EU really comes to, to, to simplify this a little bit, comes in three isotopes, three main isotopes. So uranium-238, uh, 234, 235, only 234 and 235 are fissionable, so, um, but they comprise, you know, if you take a chunk of uranium, if you mine that, they only comprise, you know, a few percent of the rock. And so what needs to happen is that fissionable material, which is U-235, needs to be enriched and so out of the enrichment process which takes uh, place you know, in nuclear power plants and also in the uh, you know, weapons industry, um, U-238 gets left over as a waste and so it's called depleted uranium because it's depleted in U-235. So you have you know, more U-238 than you have of the other isotopes because we need to keep in mind that um, depleted uranium is somewhat unique. It's a unique waste stream in that it gets hotter, meaning more radioactive over time. But one of the key issues of concern is the recurrence of a large pluvial lake. I mean, you're probably familiar with Lake Bonneville. Um, and, you know, Lake Bonneville um, existed just about 12,000 to 14,000 years ago. And so that lake could come back, you know, maybe within the next 
you know, 10,000 years, maybe within the next 50,000, but for sure, with almost near certainty, within the next 100,000 years. And what will that do? You know, would waves, you know, from the lake lap at the embankment of the cell? Would they, would the dis uh, depleted uranium that is buried there, would that get distributed um, uh, into the sediments? And then when the lake retreats, um, would the sediments, you know, get wind blown and, um, you know, do, you know, all kinds of damage to living organisms, you know, at that point in time? You know, who knows what's going to be around there, of course. I especially like the Great Salt Lake as a unique resource in the world and I want to preserve the surroundings of it in as good a condition as we can have. Our role is to evaluate the adequacy of the technical application, provide consultation advice to the division and the decision-making process will take place within the division itself. Uh, these scientists are focused on every aspect of the application. Uh, risk assessments, ecology, human health, all the elements that protects and make that operation of that facility, the proposed facility, safe to the environment and to the health uh, of the the people are living there or in the future too, just in case there is any uh, impacts could happen. We have assembled a team of uh, top technical experts in a variety of fields in geology, sedimentology, uh, embankment engineering, uh, geochemistry, uh, climatologists who understand and help can help predict what's going to happen over the long term. So we, we have this team together now and they are beginning to work on evaluating the technical aspects of this performance assessment. The analysis kind of begins uh, assuming the landfill is closed and then we ask a lot of what if questions. Uh, what might happen later at a later time? Um, would, could there be erosion? Could there be an earthquake? Could there be settling of the material in the landfill, leaching of the material? And we have to consider various media, environmental media, um, water, be it surface water or groundwater, or soil, um, emissions that might leave the landfill and go into the air. Then we have to ask ourselves the question, is that concentration or that dose that people might receive uh, acceptable? Will it degrade health or the environment? And those are important considerations in trying to decide if uh, this is a good place and a good engineering design to be the repository for this material.